Hello, my name is John Chen. This is Naja. And I'm Philip Hatchcom. Uh, we're three fourth year engineering physics students. Welcome to the UBC Brain Research Center. We're going to take you inside to take a look at the two photon microscopes that we have designed and built. Welcome to the two photon microscope room. This is the, uh, the existing two photon microscope which the lab uses. Here is the laser which sends the light into, for our microscope, this area here is where the optical path is, where we do the laser beam modification. There's the acousto-optic deflectors, our zoom system, finally where the specimen is, and in here is where the PMT is that detects the very sensitive light. Finally, this is where we have all of our electronics. Thank you. The figure shows the setup of the two photon microscopes we have built. The major components we will be discussing in our video presentation are a laser light, AODs, temporal and spatial compensation setup, zoom system, photomultiplier tube and the control system of the microscope. The first major component of our project is to use a laser light to excite the fluorescent dye. The laser is located on the lower right side of the picture. For this project, we are using 125 second TSFI short pulse laser. It's, it is called short pulse laser because it produces high intensity of laser light followed by relatively longer period of essentially no light. To achieve this target profile, we need to have superposition of different frequencies of light. And this will become important when we introduce AODs into our setup and it will cause dispersion of light. This kind of light profile is important because we need high intensity of laser light to excite the fluorescent dye and at the same time we cannot keep it stay on because it will burn the dead body. Acousto optical deflectors or AODs are one of the most important components in our project which enables us to do fast scanning of the focal plane. The AODs are located on the top left side of the picture. The Acousto optic deflector or AOD is one of the key innovations in our microscope. The AODs that we are using bend the light in the X and Y direction in the focal plane. The way it works is there's a piezo drive transducer that sends frequency rays through the acousto optic deflector crystal at a frequency of anywhere between 60 and 100 megahertz. This causes a periodic rarefication and densification of the medium, which results in a pseudo diffraction grating being formed in the crystal. This means that laser entering at a carefully adjusted Bragg angle goes straight through as a zeroth order but also there is the beam, the first order beam is deflected at an average of 5.3 degrees. As we go between 60 and 100 megahertz, we have freedom to move this beam by 1.3 degrees in either direction. In our microscope, we need two acousto-optic deflectors, one to bend the, light, the laser light in the horizontal direction and the other in the vertical. When it's properly aligned, there are four uh, output beams, output laser beams, from the AOD, but we're only interested in the one that is the first order direct diffraction for the horizontal and vertical acoustic optic deflector. One thing to remember is the acoustic optic deflector has an index of refraction of greater than one. That means that light, depending on its frequency, travels at a different velocity, introducing temporal dispersion, or bends at a different angle, introducing spatial dispersion. We already know the AODs introduce temporal dispersion to the beam path. For this reason, we have introduced a set of mirrors and prism to compensate for the temporal dispersion before the beam enters the AOD. The temporal compensation setup is located on the top right of the picture. Um, the importance of having a temporal creature here is because uh, we have a huge amount of group velocity dispersions generated by the acousto optical devices. Um, we, uh, the conventional scheme can be seen on the board here. Um, it's uh, it's uh, four prisms uh, arranging space so that we can divide the incoming beams into high wavelength component and the low wavelength component. And the low wavelength component traveling a longer distance generates uh, positive uh, GVDs. And uh, in our scheme, uh, where 
we actually use two prism setup. And then the way we do it is because um, the four prism scheme is very symmetrical. We put a mirror right in the center. Uh, and then we bounce back the laser beams at this point. The prism P3 located right after the AOD is used to compensate for the spatial dispersion. As you know that AODs introduce spatial dispersion, we can compensate for it with one single prism. And we are using SF11 equilateral prism. So as an example, red and blue light enters the prism at a different angle and when they exit the prism, then they are parallel to each other. The zoom system located on the left side of the picture is used to increase the field of view of the objective. Here is a schematic drawing of the zoom system of our microscope. The zoom system allows us to, to increase the angle of the laser that is exiting from the AOD and uh, entering the back aperture of our objective lens. This helps us to increase the field of view microscope shows the beam path of the laser entering the PMT which detects the photon. But in this part I'm going to focus on the beam path of the laser as it, as it enters the microscope. So the light enters here, it goes through our AOD, through our zoom system and then it's bounced down towards the objective where the sample which has fluorescent dye in it uh, is excited. The excited light comes back out through the objective where it meets a dichroic mirror and only the light at the wavelength of interest is deflected towards the PMT where the PMT detects the small signals of light. The picture shows the different type of electronic and control devices we have used for our project. For the device controlling our project we're using a computer uh, and essentially we're connecting other three major devices that we have to control the acoustical optical devices, the piezo model drive and the PMTs. And we're using uh, a USB port in the computer to directly connect the frequency synthesizer, IDDS, to the computer. And then we're connecting the computer to the deck card, which controls the piezo and PMTs. Um, one thing we have to point out is that we're using a clock, internal clock of the deck card, to control the IDDS so that all the devices can be secure. We hope you found this session informative. We enjoy working on this project. And we look forward to seeing how this microscope that we built together can be used to do new and interesting research in the field of neuroscience.